Hey, I'm Ayokum and I'm here chatting with Milky. Mum and dad, they've got a music shop and mum's a music teacher, so I'd always um kind of just always been surrounded by music. Early teens just started like playing around in logic on my computer in my bedroom and yeah kind of just kept doing that for a few years and kind of just started building a few songs writing songs and yeah it's kind of where it all started in my bedroom and I'm pretty much still there so we've come a long way <laughs> yeah I guess it covers a lot from just like I guess growing up the last three to four years yeah I guess experimenting with different sounds covers like relationships love and kind of just like experiencing who you are as a person as well and kind of the process of that yeah they were like every song's like started off in my bedroom in some sort of way whether i was producing it or writing it and then if it wasn't my bedroom it started we, wrote, we finished it and wrote it in a friend's bedroom so um yeah i guess bedrooms worldwide whether it's via zoom and joe's in london or oscar's at his place in eastern suburbs it's always yeah it's a bedroom it's cool I guess when I started writing the EP, it, the goal wasn't to make an EP. It was just kind of, you know, making music in my bedroom and that was kind of the, the start of it really. But I guess like growing up, like being influenced by bands like, I guess, Phoenix, The Strokes, you know, those classic like early 2000s sort of indie bands. And I guess not really referencing anything while I was making these songs, but just like what I was influenced by at the time while I was writing them. For me, I started producing because I wanted to get ideas that I could hear in my head down really quickly. And I think that comes out in the way I write. Like whenever I'm hearing something in my head, I can just put it down in a night and a song's usually, you know, 85% done that night, which I think is cool. So for me, that was kind of the reason why I started producing. And I think it's, yeah, I can just get ideas down really quickly, which I like. For me, I love bands. I've always loved bands, like visual identity and how it connects to the music. So. I guess when I started this project, I wanted to do the same. Yeah, my day job's like work in design. So I guess it was just natural that I put two and two together. And yeah, I love the process of creating that visual identity and everything that comes along with that, whether it's doing your own cover art or, you know, coming up with video ideas and merch designs. Yeah, I love doing it all. That's a really good question. I think from the song Mona Lisa, where the line's like, I try to give a little more than I take. I think that just resonates with me a lot because I guess this like EP is centered around growing up, hanging out with friends. And yeah, I guess during the time of writing these songs, I just really enjoyed hanging out with friends and I guess just grow, like growing up together, which was cool. And getting to, like, to do it right here, which is a pretty sick spot. I think I would play them carpools because at the moment, that's my favorite one and I can't wait for people to hear it. When I'm by myself, I usually start with a drum loop and then just kind of jam to guitar over that. And that's pretty much always how I start a song when I'm by myself, which I think is pretty cool and just makes writing much easier when I've already got something there. As long as the drums sound good, I always find I end up writing something good. So that's my main priority is making the drums sound good. They can definitely, definitely expect a lot of high energy. I'm pretty quiet off the stage, but when I get on there for some reason, something happens and I just love to move around, which is sick. Lots of guitars. And someone said there's like a lot of bass, even though we don't have a bass player that plays with me, but apparently someone said there's lots of bass, so let's just go really hard. <laughs> I've only played a few live shows and it was pretty nerve wracking the first one, but the crowds at every single show have been amazing and I've met so many amazing people. So yeah, I can't wait to see now that the songs are out and how people resonate to them because I've only really ever played them unreleased, which is cool. So I'm super excited for that. I think it's cool how they all came to be. Like, I guess, as I said, like, it wasn't really a goal to, you know, write an EP that kind of just, these six songs kind of just fell together, which is cool. And yeah, I think it's just a cool, like, timestamp of like where I was at at the time making these songs.
top three would be Phoenix, MGMT, and I'm going to say the Strokes. Again, I'm just going to say Phoenix because that'd be sick. I'm going to say John Mayer's Continuum. Not a big movie guy, but I'm going to say Interstellar would be wild. I wish I could answer that question. I don't think that much. Hey, I just like to be in the moment and yeah, play the songs. It's cool. I'm going to go Miley. Waiting on the World to Change by John Mayer. Mumford and Sons with Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zero supporting. It was epic. I was actually at a festival, Tame Parlor at Splendor in the Grass in 2019. <laughs> it was actually the Veronica's, um, what was the, the, it was just real classic, the pink and black checkerboard, I forget what it was called. Secret yeah, yeah, the Secret Life of. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> I think the Spice Girls are cooler. I don't even know, the quiet one or something like that. <laughs> Probably 1901 by Phoenix. Drake. <laughs> I think MGMT in the way how they didn't try to create pop music. I have absolutely no idea what I wrote, but I think it would be to really try and create a balance between life and music. I don't think there was a specific moment, but I think growing up and spending every afternoon in my bedroom writing songs with an acoustic guitar, I think it was pretty natural that that's what was going to happen.